If you please can stand, we have a word today. And I promise y'all, as the good old Baptist preacher would say, I'm not going to keep you long. I know some of y'all got to watch the Falcons and the Panthers. I'm not going to get in that way. I got a Friday chicken. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I just want to first say it's an honor once again to be in front of you guys as, uh, as family. And uh, we're going to let the Holy Spirit work because uh, the Holy Spirit is about to preach to all of us. Uh, he's about to talk to all of us, not me talking to you, but uh, the Holy Spirit talking to us. If you can, turn to your Bibles to Acts, third chapter, verse 19. Acts, the third chapter, verse 19. When you come get there, please say amen. amen. It reads, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. I repeat, repent then turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Please by again. Heavenly Father, we come in today to thank you for the word. Thank you for your power in our lives, your grace and mercy. Let this word touch someone's soul in life. Say these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 You may take your seats. The title of the word today is What a Gift. I repeat. The sermon, the title of the sermon today is What a Gift. Then it's Christmas and the time of giving. And I think about the gift, the best gift I ever got. And that gift is salvation. Amen. You think about salvation. Now let's, let's talk what exactly salvation is. Salvation is being saved from the righteous judgment of God upon the sinner. Salvation is being saved from the righteous judgment of God upon the sinner. If y'all don't mind, let me read something right quick, okay? See, a lot of people think that salvation means being saved from yourself or the devil. But that is not accurate. All have sinned against God. And under judgment of God, the judgment is known as damnation. When God condemns the eternal, to eternal hell of all of those who have offended him by breaking the law. It does not mean that God is unfair. It shows that God is holy. God must punish the sinner. But he has provided a way to escape that people will not face his righteous judgment. This means that God is both holy and loving. He must manifest each quality equally. So being saved from the wrath of God is called salvation. If you want to escape the righteous judgment of God, then you need to trust in the sacrifice of God. You need to be made right before God or by God. This righteousness of Christ is given to you if you accept him, trust in him and believe in what Jesus did. This is why the Bible says that we are saved by grace through faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God. So let's talk a little bit about salvation. You know, sometimes we think salvation is saving ourselves from drinking too much liquor. <laughs> sometimes we think salvation is, is saving ourselves from chasing too, chasing too many skirts. Sometimes we think salvation is, is by stop lying. You know, salvation has been saved from the judgment of God in which us, filthy rags, you know, what we actually really deserve, so to speak. Salvation is us being protected from God's wrath because God loves us so much and he gave us that gift. Amen. So when I say, what a gift? Think about the gift of salvation. Think about, okay, people, people doing things against you and you love them so much that you still try your best to save them. It's like somebody breaking through your house and steal your TV and you go and buy them a TV. You know what I mean? Salvation is so powerful. That when, I, when I thought about uh, when I, uh, the sermon title for this word for us, what a gift. It's a gift during this season we need to really think about. You know, we think about Jesus being born and so forth. He didn't, boy, he didn't come here just to look pretty. He came here to pay a price. Sometimes we get a little caught up in a little baby in the manger, you know what I mean? At the house, right? Not at the vending scene. The little baby at the manger. And we forget it was a price then that was that was that was a, a cost to, to this, to Jesus coming to us. So salvation is very important. But also we gotta get a little bit in the weeds too. We talk about salvation. We gotta talk about a little bit about sin. Because <laughs> that is the reason of the salvation, because of our sins or what Adam did that caused sin into this world. 
If you go to Romans 3.23, please. Romans 3.23. And it reads, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sometimes we have to get us a mirror and look in that mirror and just call a spade a spade. You really can be, can be delivered once you face who you really are. We all are sinners. Now, I know sometimes we don't get ready to step on toes, but Elder Coleman is a sinner. Okay? Pastor Reese is a sinner. Marcellus Drew is a sinner, but we are saved, and we know that. And see, once we can look in the mirror and, and, and come to grips with that, and realize that we need God to cleanse us from our sins, Amen. that is the most, that's one of the most important things is to forge reality. You know, I think like I go to call a spade a spade. I got hey, every morning, I got to say, Dwayne Coleman, you are a sinner. Now, what you can do better today? But one thing I do is, is chase Christ. Because through his salvation, through his sacrifice, I got a second chance of eternal life with my father. Amen. He knows I'm not perfect. He knew what I was going to do last week, 15 million years ago. But he gave me an out. He gave us an out, which is salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. But also, we got we talk about sin. Let's take a look at something else. Romans 6.23, if you don't mind. Romans 6, 23. And this one we got to really, really in the rubber meet the road here. <laughs> For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This means sin, we earn our way straight to hell. And when we finally wake up and recognize that, to realize this is no game, you know, this is a, how can I put it? You know, this is not no sporting event. There's no double overtime. There's no overtime. When it's over, it's over. And if you haven't got yourself right through Jesus Christ, when that game is over, your, your, your outcome will be hell. My outcome will be hell. So we got to take this serious. You know, we, uh, a lot of times you know, it's easy to, you know, be happy, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and, and think about all the good things. But we gotta also think about who we trying to, what we trying to do. Save ourselves and save as many people as we can. Because as I mentioned, there's no double overtime. When the game is over, when the clock strikes zero, there's no replay. There's no next week. It's done. So we gotta really take this sin thing uh, to realize the results of it. But that's why God, He knew that we couldn't do it on our own. And He sent His Son for us. Yeah. And salvation, as I mentioned before, what a gift. Because without Jesus Christ, man, it'd be something else down here. I wouldn't be standing here right now today. A lot of y'all would not be here right now today. But for Jesus' salvation in which he reached down Amen. and saved us. Amen. You know, he reached down. We didn't reach up. He reached down and came down and did a mighty thing. Something that, that's a really uh, so remarkable, it's hard to fathom sometimes that God sent his son to be sacrificed for us, to cleanse us for our sins. But let's talk about God's love of the fact that he did do that, okay? If you go to Romans 5, chapter 8. Romans 5, chapter 8. It reads, but God demonstrates his own love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word tells us, God commanded God loves us so much, he commanded his love for us. He commanded him to love us. You know, and like I mentioned, it's like, you know, you, uh, someone break into your house, and you, and, and you catch the robber in your house, and you give him a ride to the store to get some food. <laughs> you know, that's showing you how much God loves us, that he commanded himself to love us so much that he sent his son for us. But, you know, what we must also understand, you all, is that there's no way to get this love except through Jesus Christ. And that's what, we sometimes, that's what people in this world sometimes can forget. That they feel that they don't understand, I should say, how to get to God. There's only one way to get to God. 
If you look at Romans 16, Romans 10, I'm sorry, Romans 10, chapter 9, it'll spell it out for us, y'all. Romans, Romans 10, chapter 9. We're going to we get this from the Word right here. If you want to get to God, this is what you got to do. There's no other highways to this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I'm going to repeat that right quick so we can tell everybody we know. This is what you got to do to have external life, to be with our Father in heaven for forever. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's no other way, y'all. We can come and clean the church all night long. <laughs> we can give a million dollars to the church. We can, uh, you know, we can run around the church 25 times. But until we confess with our mouth that who our Lord Jesus Christ is, it's no way to God. It's no way to external life. And I know a lot of people in this room today know this. But our task, our ask is we got to get it out. We got to get it out to others to let them know how profound this commandment is right here. And the more that we can do that, Deacon Joe, the more saying lies we can say. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But then, you know, once we accept Christ, it's another little step there, okay? We got we to gotta talk to Christ. We got to have a daily relationship with Christ. Mm. See, we can't, you know, you can't just accept him and just, uh, how can I put it? Put him back on the shelf, you know what I mean? Like getting a, getting a, getting a Christmas gift. Oh, I like it, it's nice, and forget about it. This gift, I'm talking about what a gift. This is a lifelong gift. This is a living gift. Yeah. And the thing is, if we have a daily relationship with God, we would get so much stronger, okay? We'd be able to help so many more people. And get, the thing is, God is, he's our father. Brother Drew, don't you want to talk to your son as often as possible? You, you want to tell, you want to build that relationship, don't you? Yes, sir. So, since you want to build a relationship with, with your son, think about the Holy Father and us. Amen. He wants us to draw to him every day. Yes. See, a, a, a counselor can't do it. Right. Your spouse can't do it. Your teacher can't do it. Your best friend can't do it. Only our father can do it. Because if we seek him, everything else is going to be okay. Yeah. But it got to be daily. You know, you can't just be, you know, like they always say, God's on time God. He is. But we can't be an on time child. <laughs> you see, we got to daily go in, you know, because it's only going to make you so much stronger in the word of Christ. And that relationship, you see things so much clearer. But we got to have that daily relationship with Christ, with God. So he, because he know us, but we need to know him. You know what I mean? We need to know him. Hallelujah. And the one thing that I love about God is, you know, I, I call that new beginning. You know, I, all the, I know I did some things that, uh, you know, if they had TMZ or, you know, internet and stuff like that, y'all may say, get your butt out of that, behind that podium. <laughs> but I'm saying God would cleanse us. You know what I mean? He'll make us pure again. See, he don't care how, how dirty you are. You know what I mean? When he dip you into that blood, you come up like white snow. When he dip you in that blood, you know, you will come up a new man, a new woman. A marriage can come up new. A sickness can be, can be cured, okay? Jobs can be got. Relationships can be fixed. When you get dipped in that blood, and God, Jesus, our Savior, he wants to dip us in that blood, because he that blood was costly. Mm. And we, when we can respect that blood more, then know that's what we got to go to. Yeah. God say, I don't care how much money you got in your pocket. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you, until you got Jesus, you will not be whole. Because yeah. money can't buy you to heaven. Right. It gives you temporary happiness, but it won't give you the external life. And so if you want to get cleansed, you got to keep on, keep on chasing God, okay? Now I told y'all we're going to be here too long, didn't we? We gonna take it on to the house, but it's a, it's, a, it's a factors I want to talk about when it comes to salvation that I'd like to leave y'all with. You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith in God. You know, you know, 
you have to be able to, to know who's in control and who's in charge. And your daily, when you wake up and go to work, you gotta have faith that God will take care of your, your wife, your kids. And no one, the law system can't do it. Only God can do that, okay? You gotta have faith that you're gonna have a job. Because number one, your boss can't do it. Only God can keep the keep your money coming in. Repentance. Y'all, we gotta repent. And the thing we come to repentance, we gotta change how we live. We can't be the same. We can't be part-time Christians. Also, as I mentioned, you got to respect the blood. We got to really, really, sometimes, you know, that little movie, Passion of Christ, I mean, sometimes you need to look at it every now and then yeah. to see what God, what Jesus did for us, for us filthy rags so we can have an everlasting life. Works. Hey, help some. you be Christ-like. You know, don't just sit down. Help somebody sometimes. Yeah. Go out to the world. You know, spread the gospel. You know, help somebody who can't help themselves. That's right. You know, the, the one who, the, the needy people, you know, when I say that, we all be needy one given time. But go, hey, go, because the thing is, when you show that, that a God be loved to somebody you don't know, you bring them to Christ. But they, they, they going to ask, why are you doing this? My Lord Jesus say, Amen. that's why I'm doing this. Baptism, we got to be true believers. We got to truly believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior. The gospel, when I think about the gospel, this book right here. We got to read it, we got to study it, we got to know it, and we got to spread it. That's what we got to do with the gospel. Yeah. Confession, that's that daily walk with Christ. Mm. Every day, hey God, you know I do, hey, help me out here. Help me get over this. Jeez. Confess with your heart and your mind your shortcomings so God can make you whole. Yeah. And the last thing that we got to do is just be thankful for grace. Mm. Be thankful for grace, because without grace, I tell you, we in a handful of things. So we thankful for grace.